In this video, we're going to take a look at the first GraphQL hacking lab on Portsliggers Web Security Academy. The lab is called Accessing Private GraphQL Posts. We typically start these videos by going through the background information that's relevant to the lab, but the last video was an introduction to GraphQL attacks where we went through all of the background information because there's quite a lot about what GraphQL is, how to work with it in Burp Suite, and then how we can look for GraphQL endpoints, exploit unsanitized arguments, and things like that. So if you didn't see that video, I would encourage you to go back and check it out. Otherwise, let's continue with the lab. The description for this one says, the blog page for this lab contains a hidden blog post as a secret password. To solve the lab, find the hidden blog post and enter the password. So let's open up the lab. And let's start by testing out some common GraphQL endpoints. So we saw this already in the background information that we can test endpoints like slash GraphQL or slash API slash GraphQL or maybe just slash API. None of those are working. We can also try GraphQL slash GraphQL or GraphQL slash API. Also not working. And the final thing was to try and add a V1 to the end if none of those work. So let's try that again with some of the same ones. And notice that we get to this one and it's GraphQL slash V1 and it says method not allowed. At this point, we might also remember that the documentation said that it's normally a post request is made to the GraphQL endpoint, although it could be others sometimes. But we can go to our HTTP history anyway. We'll send it to the repeater. And in here, we can easily change the request method from get to post. And we get a new error this time. It says unexpected content type. So that was something else we saw. It's typically JSON. So let's change this to a JSON content type. And now we're told the body can't be empty. So let's give it an empty JSON object. Now we're told that the query isn't present. So let's go and test that universal query. So here's the universal query. We will need to change the syntax slightly. Okay, so just need to add some quotes in around here as well. And a colon, I believe this should be it. And now we get back the type name query. Notice now that we also have this GraphQL tab, so we can make this a lot easier in future just by using this syntax. So we won't need to put in that full query as a JSON object. Next, we'll try to use this introspection probe request to find out some information about the schema. So again, I'll paste this in here. This returns the name of all of the available queries, but let's try and get some more information by running a full introspection query. And I'm over on the GraphQL tab now. I'm just going to paste that whole block in. And we get back some error messages about the field undefined. Now, the documentation mentioned, and in fact, we have a comment here which says this often needs to be deleted in order to run. So perhaps we can just take these out and then try it again. And now we seem to have far better results. I can see some mentions of a blog post, an author, paragraphs, summaries, and a post password. So now we can see everything, but let's go and test out that GraphQL visualizer that we saw mentioned in the background information in the previous video. So the visualizer will have a default introspection query and a sample result. And there you can see the introspection visualization. I'm going to paste in the response that I just copied, and I'll also need to go and remove the HTTP headers and stuff at the top. Take that out, and there you can see that renders properly. So we've got this query, we've got two queries, get blog posts and get all blog posts. And then you can see which are the parameters of those. We've got ID, image, title, author, etc. The one that we're interested in was the post password. So we could use this information to manually construct a new GraphQL query, but probably the easiest way would be to go back to the lab homepage and we'll try and find some of those GraphQL calls in the standard functionality. So if we try and view posts, for example, and then go back to our HTTP history. Then you'll see that we have this post request to the GraphQL endpoint, and it already has the query in there. We can use the GraphQL tab then to format it better. And at the moment, it is getting a blog post. You can see it's taken in the ID, and it's going to retrieve these elements. So if we send this to the repeater, and then use the GraphQL tab, why don't we just try and add in here and say post password, and then click send. And this time it should come back with a post password, but for this one it's null. So we can basically go and increment through these IDs as well. And see there's nothing on the second one. And if we go to the third one, 
this time we get back the post password. So it's in the third post. Also, if we go back again, let's just go to the other post request. There was this other one, which was get all blog posts. So let's just play around with that one as well. This one doesn't take any variables, so we don't provide an ID. So let's just click send. These come back, but it doesn't actually come back with a password, right? So what if we put in here then the post password and click send. And in this case, we still don't get the password because it's not actually returning the third element. So we would specifically need to query that third item in order to get the password. Another thing to mention is we just manually sent off that introspection query, but we can actually just right click and use this GraphQL option as long as it's a GraphQL request. And then we can set the introspection query and that'll just populate this for us. So we can click send and there we go. We get back all the same results. And then once we get back those results, we can right click and then use GraphQL and say that we want to save them to the sitemap. And that means if we go back to our sitemap and have a look at, uh, where is it? GraphQL v1 then you'll actually see these queries have been populated in this tree as well. Anyway, let's go back to our repeater. Let's take the password and submit the solution. And there we go, we've solved the lab. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video. In the next video, we'll be looking at accidental exposure of private GraphQL fields. And as usual, let me just recommend that you sign up to the Integrity platform if you wanna find some vulnerabilities with GraphQL APIs and get paid for it. This is a good place to start. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.